Bill of Knowledge Jurist in Houston, Texas. Uh, I work in San Lux Habitat. San Lux is considered one of the best three or four sectors uh, uh, in the US. Uh, part of Texas Medical Center, uh, which composed very seven hospitals, uh, which one of the best centers in the US. Uh, uh, in Virginia, uh, in more California, and that one is one of the best. I'm proud to be here with you today. Uh, it's my honor uh, to be here today among uh, one of the best doctors. We are the of Masr, MashaAllah, and the Kassar Dekatra. Here, we are the group of Just to give an example, uh, the head of the uh, liver department, uh, Emily Anderson, number one cancer hospital, Dr. Ahmed Kassar, Masri. Same uh, Dr. Javier uh, Osman, uh, Methodist Hospital, part of Texas uh, Medical Center. Uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, highly educated, highly trained uh, doctors, Egyptian, who must from all over the world. When I was talking about Dr. Muhammad Mustafa in Sana, we agree what we're lacking is not the position, not the knowledge, it's the system to exploit the best in our doctors. For a better plan, inshallah, with your help, to uh, be able to give the best to our people, because we deserve the best. Uh, <coughs> I've been very eager to uh, give lecture here. Uh, in the last year, we have been in the last year, Dr. Masri, in the America, Masri, أحمد ماهر ومعظمهم ومستشفيات ثانية من جروب اسمها أطباء من أجل مصر أمريكان بورس وفايدوك وفيجيب أه على كان ليا الشرف إن أنا نظمت معظم الرحلات دي وأنا ما زالش غزو لكي الأسف في الأسف الخاصة فأنا أرجو أن تستحملوني إن أنا أحب الله تسيك أه أحب أبتلي بكيس برزنتيشن أه I doubt that we are not so old. Okay. 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 This is actually a real patient. I just saw like a less than two weeks ago. Uh, this patient is 23 years old. who's complaining of uh, 10 over 10 abdominal pain, uh, diarrhea, weight loss for more than six months. Seen by several physicians, uh, no one were able to help. But in history, she's 23 years old in a patient uh, with history of nausea, numb bloody vomiting, Abdominal pain, water is two, and 60 pounds weight loss. Uh, that's about like 25 kilograms. Uh, to add more, she's a petite lady uh, who says he lost 25 kilograms. The exciting symptoms are worse by eating, which is a little bit more confusing for the history. The patient has just had a negative chronoscopy, an EGD up and down, uh, negative pathology, uh, completely normal uh, on the picture, actually. She had been treated for a long time for uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Now it says the treatment for the last few months has been ineffective. They changed the treatment itself ineffective. To add more to the confusion, she met the criteria for irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, she had the crampy abdominal bowel movements for more, more than three months of terminating uh, diarrhea and constipation. Diarrhea for a few days, constipation for a few days. So she met the three criteria for irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, sometimes we see more of the diarrhea component, sometimes more of the constipation component. 
kill mix, which is more rare. Right? She was sent by her primary doctor to the ER for her symptoms can kind of uncontrolled. She's crying from pain. She was seen in the ER. They are positioned order a CAT scan. By the time she made it to the floor and yet did uh, my service. Uh, I didn't even have a chance to send the resident to see her because uh, she was very upset, crying here in her fiance. Uh, the angry and fit thing, she said she wanted to fire her gastroenterologist. Uh, I thought that if I'm not seeing her in the next five minutes, you can fire me too. General in the exam, she is uh, very anxious, fearful, stress, uh, severe pain, uh, thin body built, with the bullet, for uh, hit ear and nose, uh, no, no GBD, no pallor, uh, no extras, cardiovascular, uh, with normal exam, pulmonary, uh, abdomen was soft, but diffusely tender. It course at the epigastric area, mid abdomen. She has increased bowel sounds, uh, no rebound, no garden. Extremities, no pitter edema, no cyanosis, no flopping, also intact. So, as I just mentioned, the test can abdomen was done from the ER, which was completely normal. No pathology. Lab, CBC, PMP, liver profile. Uh, Magnesium uh, was a, a bit low. Uh, Prealbumin was borderline. I would check in that to see how manual she is. Uh, abdomen x ray, no alias, no small bowel obstruction. See that. We send it, came back next day, it was positive. Uh, but the thing we really saw her empirically in Plagio, uh, since admin. She starts to improve a little bit. Uh, next day, what she was saying is going to the bathroom a lot. Every five minutes, as she said. Uh, we controlled her pain, which was the most important thing for her. Fluids uh, for dehydration, of course, and you made XPPI. PPI. Uh, see the contact isolation. And patient was discharged at home in flagell tablets for a total of two weeks after contact isolation and hygiene application, hand wash with soap and water. The nurses did a very good job in the medication, which is the most important thing uh, after the, uh, the treatment, the, the pharmacological treatment. Uh, they stress to the patient the importance of the hand wash with soap and water, not alcohol, uh, hand wash technique. So what is CDEF? What do we know about it? It's, it's, we see it very, very commonly now, actually. Uh, the week before I left, I had three patients in my service have CDEF colitis. Uh, I have others about 15, 20 patients uh, a day. Uh, so we, we can see now more than before, community acquired, which we did not used to see before, maybe 20 years before, ago. We know about healthcare related uh, cases first. We knew about CDF was 1935 when we first diagnosed. So, what is the scope of the problem? First, we have to admit there is a dramatic increase. Actually, some hospitals have an epidemic or pandemic sometimes uh, of CDF. Mostly patient to patient, mostly healthcare providers. Uh, helping uh, or not helping controlling it. The rate used to be 31 per 100,000, jumped up 61 per 100,000, doubled between 96 and 2003. As we go higher in the population, so age the risk factor is 228 per 100,000. Why do we care about CDF? Because the most serious complication of uh, 
alias toxic megacolon and perforation. But three months ago, I had a patient who was while in the, in the hospital being treated for UTI with BRE and anemia. He was found to have C. colitis, complicated by toxic megacolon, underwent right hemicolectomy successfully, continued with that treatment for C. colitis. He had a fully catheter now, post -op. We have to treat him with antibacterial, antifungal, and treat the C. Sealed carriage occurs in 20 to 50 percent of adults in hospitals. Mm -hmm. The long-term care facilities too. Healthy adults that uh, carry rate about three <coughs> percent. About 20 percent of patients on admission in the hospital who are negative to compare to positive by time of discharge. Transmission. Highly transmissible, okay. via spores, through permits, in surface. Once inside the colon, hand, fecal, or a root. It turned into a vegetative state, and the infection starts there. Yes. Is easily transmissible uh, between hospital roommates. That's why they started doing uh, for patients with infection. We see that they use a private bathroom. Only case you can share bathroom with someone with that if you also have a C that infection. Risk factors: antibiotics, number one. And this antibiotics that most commonly associated, less common and rare. One of the most common that we see association with is the chloroquinolones, clindamycin, penicillins, cephalosporins, less commonly or occasionally, uh, macrolides, actrim, trimethoprim, sulfonamides. Rarely, uh, you even see it with the treatment for C. Diff. Even with that, can happen like a, in flagell or vancomycin. Number two uh, risk factor is age. Again, about age of 65, we found the rate uh, of 228 per 100,000. One of the most commonly used medication is potential Tupam inhibitors, this is another risk factor. Insurance feeding, gastrointestinal surgery, cancer, chemotherapy. Going back to that, all of that is hospital related as we see that. But the less common type the community acquired did a study in Minnesota in 1991 to 2005. Over 14 years, they found there is a dramatic increase to 41% uh, from the previous number. So what is CDF macro? It's an anaerobic, crambostive, spore-forming, toxin-producing, active bacillus. To make things worse, spores are resistant to heat, acid antibiotics. Once they are in the colon, they turn into a vegetative state and they start their work. Toxin B is a virulence factor. Toxin A is the one causing the inflammation, the secretory state, and the watery diarrhea. So what 
clinical uh, types, we see more or less it's kind of severity uh, uh, stages. One is asymptomatic carrier, uh, no diarrhea, no abdominal pain, no nausea, no uh, bleeding. Of course, examine uh, because the contrast could be willing to do it, uh, all are normal. Next, which is the mildest type, is C. diff associated diarrhea with colitis. You must see some water cells in the stool, uh, maybe some blood occult, uh, mild nausea and anorexia, uh, maybe fever, uh, cytosis. If you do a colonoscopy or a colonoscopy, you see a diffuse or bad sheen on specific colitis. Now we're coming more serious, pseudomembranous colitis, which is more diagnosed with a colonoscopy or a biopsy. What exactly you see is that the characteristic raised adherent yellow plaques, patches up to one inch, This is a scary one. This is why we, we all care about CETA. The fluminant colitis. In that time, you maybe you not even see a diarrhea because of the areas, the bowel dilatation, uh, no diarrhea. Just the abdominal pain, the nausea, vomiting, the fever, the white blood cells. And then you see the, the peritoneal uh, uh, inflammation, peritonitis, guarding. This is the one that you immediately call the surgeon. We try to avoid colonoscopy, flexible, or uh, in any sort of touching patient. I've seen cases of perforation from colonoscopy. This is a silly disease, as always tell my patients. Uh, young people cannot even make it to the bathroom. Uh, they have accidents. 15, 20 times, I've seen patients saying, we're going to the bathroom every five minutes. Uh, small amounts, water stool. Relapse reinfection is common, can be up to 20 25% cases. Diagnosis. The most accurate one is stool culture. <coughs> but hardly anyone doing that. Then cytotoxicity is safe. Uh, that's falling behind you. Uh, ELISA, uh, we used to do it till a few years ago. Now uh, it's so expensive, but kind of more widely used, almost 100% uh, sensitive, is uh, a PCR. In my hospital, it takes about 24 hours, 48 hours to come back to get the results, but very reliable. Yes. Treatment. First, cessation of the, uh, the inciting antibody, if you can. Many times we see elderly have a combination of ETI, for example, and C. diff colitis. So, good luck. Uh, the recommendation is stop the antibody, but if someone having a, a serious infection, you can continue with both. Hand hygiene. I can say this 10 times, the hand hygiene, hand wash. According to the WHO, and, and we'll come to that. Uh, mild cases, tubes, pleasure, hemigram, recommendations oral, uh, every eight hours, or 10 to 14 days. We usually give the 14 days. We don't care about 10 days, but it's kind of more severe, more recurrent now. Severe and resistant cases. First choice is vancomycin. Then, if it's severe or resistant case, you go up to 500 milligrams. I haven't seen much of these cases actually. Uh, patient cannot tolerate the vancomycin. Actually, the flagellum 
is commonly causing us, we all, we all know, causing the, the nausea and vomiting. So we shift to vancomycin. Uh, patient cannot even tolerate that vancomycin. Uh, recently, they come with that relaxomycin. Recurrences, 25% of cases, we see recurrences. Again, same, more or less, regimen. Uh, you go with plasma, then you go with van vancomycin for more severe cases. Uh, but with this, you go, after the two weeks, you go with tempering course uh, of vancomycin. Even there is a recommendation by uh, 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 our infection clinics uh, to administer uh, uh, along with the dependent vancomycin, vaccine or phenaxomycin. If you have an elderly uh, with serious infection prominent, or you see what count more than 20,000, or a uh, fragile elderly patient uh, with serious abdominal pain, uh, you don't wait. You call the surgeon. Let them know about the patient quickly, as soon as you can. It's fatal, and I have seen patients die with serious colitis. Hemi colectomy. Hemi colectomy. For megacolon, toxic megacolon, colon perforation. Yes. Life saving. There is a, a, a debate about probiotics. Uh, I've used patients, it helps, but there is no real sufficient data uh, uh, from serious studies, uh, uh, controlled study, uh, about its use or benefit. Uh, there is also a stool culture, uh, basically the rectal inoculation of, of uh, healthy people's stool to change the balance. Basically, the infection is lack of that. Uh, work comes in, and the good guys, big guys, go to work. The little guys stay back in the alley, and now they start pulling everybody. That's exactly what see that. You give antibiotic, you mess up with the normal chlora, uh, see that the small number, uh, not sufficient enough to cause infection. Now, you mess up with that balance, you could end up flourishing on the CDF, clostridium uh, difficile, and there are now a large number capable enough to cause that uh, infection. But there, behind the probiotics or the stool culture inoculation, is to bring that normal flora back to balance, and CDF is usually is a weak bacteria by itself. Prevention and control is becoming an epidemic now. Uh, so that's why the stress now into uh, hand wash, uh, control of antibiotic uh, prescription, especially broad spectrum antibiotic. They, they did a very interesting study. Uh, the protein health people. Would be RE, vancomycin uh, resistant uh, enterococcus, in their hand. And they divided in two groups. One, one they washed their hand according to the WHO uh, for three seconds, and the other one for five seconds only. The one is five seconds wash with water alone, produce virtually no change in the their ear recovery. The only three seconds did it with water and soap. More interesting in the same uh, topic, there was an ICU in, in Michigan State University. They have a high rate for Lyme sepsis. Like many of our hospitals here, the lack of uh, funding, financial limitations. So they started using hand wash technique. 
and they did this study for four years. They found that after four years, they came up to zero lying sepsis related infection in their ICU, just from using soap and water. Uh, any questions? برضه حضرتك قلت الفالمنت كولايتس احنا الاكسبريشن ده 
بنقول عليه هنا توكسيك ميجا كولون which is a complication of infectious and non-infectious diseases of the colon In non-infectious law inflammatory bowel disease لكن هل حد من الأعدين يعلم ان even الأمابيك كولايتس can turn into fulminant colitis وان اي جي اي infection ممكن to turn into fulminant colitis with pass unnoticed والعيان ما يا اما العيان بيداي يا اما بيتفتح في السيرجيكال وورد وهو مش عارف اتس كيس اوف اكيوت ابدومين وشوك وليكوسايتوزيس وفيفر ويتعمل له كوليكتومي اكوردنج تو برفوريشن وما بيبقاش حد عارف هو برفوريتد ليه يعني انا بشوف ان ده الفرق في البيهيفير ويزر في البوبيوليشن في مصر او في الفيزيشن والادميشن بتاعه ناحيه الحاجة اي اجري احنا في مصر عندنا مشكله بنعرفها أه أه السور أه والميه ميه والريجيشن بتاع الفيجيتابلز جوه بتاع صح احنا عندنا ديفرنت بروبلم اجري لا عندنا عندنا ممكن اعتبر هي كوليستريديا ان جنرال كومنسل يعني كوليستريديا بتصير وبفرنجنس وانواعها هي اوريدي كومنسل والكومنسل دي بترن باثوجينيك بحاجه من الاثنين يا اما هي توحشت وراحت في مكان ثاني يا اما في نفس مكانها والكومنسلز الثانيين اللي هم الانتاجونيزم بتوعها راحوا يا اما حصل ديسربشن في الابيثيليا البارير اللي موجود يعني هو ده اللي بيعمل <تصفيق> I would say this is commensal. What do you think? 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 What do you think?
PCR for the toxin specific for the, the toxin, yes. Uh, but I, I, ha, I have to specify toxin A or the toxin B or the kid or the oh. right? The, they do it for both. I have to specify? They do it for both, yes. For both? Yes. Okay. Because we, we strain more A, more B, but PCR is, is almost 100% sensitive. For the toxin, not for the organism. But there is a thing, a thing clinical, and we also talk about clinical background. To ease my suspension, here in the patient is in catastrophe. دلوقتي جاي لي كرونيك دايريا هيبقى كونسيدر ديفنتلي مع الاسباب بتاعت الكرونيك دايريا. يو لوكينج فور سمون كامينج توداي ويز دايريا ستارتنج يسترداي او ساتردايت ويز 15 20 مارجو بينز توداي. ما هو ده اللي انا كنت عاوز اتكلم فيه يعني كرونيك دايريا من الحاجات اللي انت بتبتدي تبروسيد فيها تعمل انفستيجيشن اكتر من الطبيعي اللي انت بتعمله لكن النهارده انا عندي اكيس اوف اكيوت دايريا. يا. زي ما قلت لحضرتك اسيمبتوماتيك فيفر فيفر ستورم. Yes, storm. The patient storm. storm. يعني أنت بتقول تقريبا أنا عندي وعندي guarding و tenderness في الأبدومن و rigidity. Yeah. يبقى أنا case of acute abdomen with diarrhea, bloody diarrhea, <تصفيق> مع fever. The <تصفيق> CBC فيها leukocytosis. دي المدخل الأساسي اللي هيخليني أفكر في الكوليستريديم ديفيسيل أو في الانتيبيوتيك أسيشيت الدائرية. أيوه. ده ده قصدك. أيوه. لكن أنا قصدي برضه مش يعني مش أي حالة دائرية. Did not have leukocytosis. Did not have fever. Everything was normal. Okay, but he had acute abdomen. And he had no diarrhea. And he had no diarrhea. 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 ما هي بتعمل توكسيك ميجاكولوم برضه. You don't want to wait till the abdomen is rigid. You won't pick it up before. ده هيتفتح. ده هيتعمل ده هيبقى اكسبلورد. الريجيد ابدومن يعني فور قبل ما اعمل اي حاجه. لكن اوكي واحد عنده سيفير دايريا وعنده ابدومينال تندنس. هاو تو بروسيد. اوكي. اكين. You want to wait. You don't want to wait till the prominent or toxic ميجاكولوم. Yes. Okay. Right. You want someone is coming to you with a لا انا دلوقتي بتكلم على على اللي حضرتك قلت لي عليه ان هو ممكن ما يبقاش فيه فيفر ولا ليكوسيتوزس وعنده دايريا وابدومينال بين. It doesn't have to be all the clinical picture, okay? But I'm saying all, all the symptoms that could be there, okay? It doesn't have to be all of them, some of them, okay? That's a differential diagnosis, okay? Not a different diagnosis. That's why you're doing the test, right? Okay. So you're looking for some of these, but I'm not saying all of these, okay? Fever. Number one is uh, uh, the diarrhea, okay? nausea, vomiting could be there. Okay. Why? Watery stool. This is a magic word. Watery stool. Maybe bloody. Doesn't have to be bloody. Okay. Uh, one of your differential diagnoses is see that you order the test, give the patient pleasure, you could pay patients. Yeah, hey, Diamond has a test from the start. But Anna, let us match my hagat tell you. Viral gastroenteritis. I have the same picture. A bit of dysentery. A little bit, but it's bloody. It's possible that it's watery. Maybe it's because the water is there with the viral infection. Even even the cholera. How long it takes viral gastroenteritis to resolve? Two or three days. I mean, I'm saying I'm still seeing the patient. I'm saying I'm saying the patient is coming from the head. He has this condition. So the differential diagnosis is there. He's asking for a test because he's not able to do it. المفروض from the start you are doing all this investigation and this is a routine يعني انا اول ما هشوفه هعمل له stool analysis و stool culture و no, 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 no. we don't do the stool culture anymore we don't do the, the scientific system anymore the one that's being done now that ELISA and more commonly now is a PCR okay ده عشان ايه عشان السيلاب اه لا انا بتكلم على حاجات تانية أنا بتكلم أنا دلوقتي عندي ديفرنشال ديجنوزيس ما هو الكلام ده أس يعني كأن أنا عارف إن دي كوليستريديم أنا بتكلم قدامي بيشنت بهذا الوضع فـ how to proceed يعني يعني إزاي؟ أنا نفسي في الكلينيك أنتو ذا سيم ثينج يو دوينج أوكي أنا أنا بيشنت فيرا كاسترون كرايزيس أنا أعطيه نوتيس أنا أعطيه نوتيس أوكي بس سامون كامينج أوكي مع 20 بالومينس أداي ذيس نوت كاسترون كرايزيس نوت فيرا 20 20 وات؟ 
20 bowel movements a day. حد بيروح حمام 20 مره في اليوم، 30 مره في اليوم. Is this viral gastroenteritis? That's how you see it? لا. It's something different. بس something هو strange. هو هي هي مش هي برضه مش كده، يعني هي الكلوستريديم ديفيسيل نوت اولويز 20 مره في اليوم. مش كلها؟ نو no, it is. It is. كلها؟ Yeah. Most cases yes. Every 15 minutes. هي سؤال تاني احنا بنتكلم على السودومايبرونز عشان كده شايفين ان هي نفس المسميات لكن هي الكلوستريديم ديفيسيل او الانتي فيراسيل. هو في السودومايبرونز اه مش تعريف. That's when you see five or, or six moments a day, that's when you think of viral. أنا إيه بستنى أو إيه اللي يخوفني؟ اللي يخوفني العالم اللي إيه في عنده فيفر وتوكسيك وبطني مش مريح، دي بتخوفني، لكن في جميع الأحوال أنا بديله الأنتي حتى لو هو فايرا، لأن أنا ما بقاش أعرف أشخصه، أشخصه إزاي؟ وما عنديش فاسيلتي تو دايجنوز، ويتهيألي اللي إحنا بنعمله إز نوت رونج. ان انا ببتديه على سيبو لا دكتور بهجت يعني احنا دلوقتي لما يجي بيشنت عنده فيفر ووتري دايريه اي نيفر جيف هيم انتي بيوتكس يو نيفر نيفر لا اذا كانت لا انا نيفر يعني لا لو حط عامه كويسه انا بقول له لا ساينتيفيكالي ما فيش علاج بقول له استنى يكون سيب بديل سيمبتوماتيك تريت لكن لو هو في فيفر وفي ابدومينال سيمبتومز اي هو على طول ادي سيبو لا ما هو برضه ما هو الابدومينال سيمبتومز دي موجوده في الفايرال لكن هو يمكن الليكوسايتوزيز والنيتروفين ديكوسايتوزيز او البلادي دايريا اه الحاجات دي اللي بتلفت نظري شويه في الاول ممكن ما يبقاش فيه في الاول حتى في الاكسبيديا ما فيش ما فيش انا اللي بيبقى باين واضح قوي في الديسنتريك بتاع الاميبايسيز وبتاع كان شيجيل والشيجيل ساعات كان ما يبقاش فيها ديسنتريك صعب تيجي دايريه برضه. فأنا مش هي دي النقطة، لو باين ديفينتلي كده بدي الكومبينيشن مترو ليزازول انتي بيوتيك ولكن امبيسيفيا أو مش عارف. هو ده في ستيتس هم بيمنعوه وبيحذروا منه الترافلر حتى الترافلر الدائرية لما بيجي مصر ان هو كتر الانتي بيوتكس هو اللي بيعمل ريزيستنت سترينز يعني فهم لما بيجي مسافر بيديله ادفايس بيقول لو جالك دايريه واداله الموشنز بياخدوها اعتقد كده يعني موجوده نوتس ان هو ما ياخدش حاجه خالص ان هو سيمبتوماتيك تريتمنت الترابلر حاجه لكن احنا بنتكلم على عندنا احنا احنا بنعمل كده وده بيجيب النتائج اللي احنا بنربوها لكن انا بقول على حاله مش باين لان هي فيها ديسنتريكس انا بكتب له اصيب واي ويت وسيم ومش عارف ايه ده على مستوى البرايفت Actually, we, we never, we never diagnose zoodomembranous colitis or antibiotic associated colitis. I think you saw the same thing. Zoodomembranous colitis. The name is not the same. No, I never diagnose. I'm not diagnosed. No, he was the patient survived. He exploded and did a colectomy. يا اكسباير ده ده الاوت كام بتاع النقطه دي انا الدنيا كم هنا؟ ده لو كان بيتعمل. لا تعمل. لا البي سي ار؟ البي سي ار عشان التوكسين هنا التوكسين اي وبي والبروسيديم دي في سي. ولو هيتعمل هيتبعت بره، ما هو انت ممكن تاخد منك ويتبعت بره ويجي لك بعد فوات الاوان، انا مش هستناه اسبوع ولا 10 ايام. اي ثينك سبعة ولا اثنين كيس جديد. بس البوينت البوينت من هذا الموضوع هو بس لكي تبرمج الى ذلك. انا اي دونت. في بارت اوف ذا ديفرنشال ديجنوزيس. 
case of diarrhea I mentioned to be eating extra tigers could be something very serious turning into toxic So just to know it, I'm sorry, as far as Russia that knows it, that's all we need. هو عامل عامل زي الاكتينومايكوزيس لو ما حد يصدق ان الاكتينومايكوزيس هو الموست اندياجنوز ديزيز ان ذا وورلد الاكتينومايكوزيس الاكتينومايسيس اللي هو الاليال اكتينومايسيس اليوسيكال اكتينومايسيس از ذا موست اندياجنوز ديزيز اول اوفر ذا وورلد فاحنا برضه يعني في حاجات كتيره غايبه عن عن الديفرنشال دياجنوزيس يا اما الطاس يا اما ممكن تفيد على انه زي لا ده هيكون ماد دكتور محمد لو جالك اكيوت دياريه في العياده بتاعتك هتدي سيمبتوماتيك مش هتدي هذا موضوع كبير ولا مش عاوزين نعطل الدكتور عشان تاكيوت دياريه لا بس حضرتك ما الدكاتره دي عايزه تفهم يعني جالك اكيوت دياريه هتدي له انتي بايوتيك سيبر ولا مش هتدي لا لا مش شرط على حسب اللي انا بشوفه اصل اكيد ايه حضرتك اكيد اكيد عندي ايه؟ This is part of the pressure that knows I did something you did It's part of the patient diagnosis. Anabin is very, it's easy to order the test. And I don't care about how much it costs. Because someone is going to take it, it's not going to be me. I have to with you. Over there, the insurance is going to take it. Someone's insurance, each one is going to take it. So it doesn't really matter. Now, when I can't have it for some kind of action, you have to have a test for a lot. It's a million dollar question. But, but, if it's more widely ordered, okay, that, you know, and I know that, I'm going to bring the cost down. This is one. Two, if it's worse someone life, it would be that. Somehow. إحنا إحنا إميون إن شاء الله إن الإنسان اللوكال الإنسان الإميونتي عالية جدا لدرجة إن حضرتك تعلم إن الشيستيزوما أوفر والتريكوريس أوفر is used in the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease فإحنا عشان كده الناس بالهرزية اللي عندنا ما بيجي لهم شيء أنسيرتيف كلايتس وكرونز ديزيز ونلاقيهم في البوبيليشن فهم مشكلة إن هم البول بتاعتهم نظيفة إحنا مش مش نظيفه بس ما بتحصلش فيها كاتاستروف لانها يعني بتقدر تستعمل. يا ابو سيدي احنا ما قلناش اتس لاين اوف تريتمنت احنا بنقول ده مبني على الاميونيتي. وعمل أبر ليه تاني؟ أبر ليه؟ عشان عنده أبدومنا بين أو نظام بين؟ أبدومنا بين نوازي أبدومنا That was a typical presentation that still that we checked it and recorded it and patient at home in Korea and it was very hard We survived If we can go into that next topic Deep vein thrombosis, DBT This is a, another case, 50 years old woman in the waiting emergency department for a four day history of pain, swelling, retina, the left leg. There is no history of recent immobilization, anything like that, cancer, surgery, no history of DVD. Physical exam, pressure is 37.7, low grade fever. Uh, pressure 132 over 82 is okay. Pulse rate 65, good. His pressure is 16 per minute. Good, no, no, nothing to consider, but something like a pulmonary embolism or something like that. Examination of the left leg discloses warm, urethema uh, all around, uh, increased girth compared to the other leg, one centimeter, bigger than the other leg. If they go to more details of where it should be, the centimeter below the APL, uh, 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 this localized tenderness, 
along the distribution of the deep brain system. There is hitting edema. Uh, all of them are absent. Okay. No varicose veins. So, what's the test to do now? CT, MRI, venous uh, Doppler, uh, D dimer, or something in basic like venography. What we should be ordering is something uh, the cheapest, uh, less invasive, with a few side effects, yeah. and above all, most efficient. So they choose D-dimer test. Why D-dimer is simple, non invasive, uh, only the uh, penis structure has high negative predictive value. What does it mean? It means if it's negative, mostly you don't have a DBT. Uh, if it's positive, then you go a higher level to the ultrasound, the venous doctor. Even above the age of 50? So they went by something called Will's criteria. Okay. More or less now is a uh, user computer system checklist or a paper checklist. Okay. It's all about money. Okay. So the hospital forcing position now to follow this system. Okay. After hours, they call the ultrasound tech. That costs money. Okay. So you have to have good justification. Okay. So you have to have more than three points in Will's criteria. So if you have a negative D-dimer with low uh, score in the Wales uh, criteria, you cannot just hide it. And you pick a variable and just let it go. So, why this patient did not get uh, acid venous doppler? Give one point for each, okay? Uh, active cancer, immobilization for any reason, uh, swelling of the leg for more than three centimeters. That case have one centimeter, okay? More than the other leg. Pitting okay. edema, uh, collateral venous uh, swelling, superficial veins. The suspicion that alternative diagnosis is present give you minus two uh, out of that score. So if you have all of these, then you go up with minus two, you have to do the math. You gotta do the venous doctor, okay? Zero to two is questionable, okay? One, no, okay? These patients have fever, have erythema, have tenderness. Most likely she have uh, cellulitis, so we have minus two. Again, if the D-dimer is positive, we'll go to the next level. Um, it has a low sensitivity for identifying from by limited to the calc veins. Uh, I'm lucky my hospital actually they read the uh, uh, perineal veins, uh, even the foot. They give me reading that they say they have acute, they have chronic. I don't know how they do it comes with you. Venography is aggressive, uh, invasive. It's the gold standard, but no one is doing it. Uh, MRI, a CAT scan. If you think of a joint infection. Uh, uh, I will do it. If you look alive, it's abscess uh, or something like that, I will do a CAT scan. Uh, but not for DVD. So, if it was positive and positive venous doctor, I would treat the patient course for 3 6 months uh, with a goal of INR between 2 and 3 or 2 and 5. What did this patient have? Risk factor uh, like. Protein C, protein S, deficiency. Uh, what should we do? First, we do not check the hypercoagulable uh, state factors at time of venous uh, thrombosis, either DVT or TV, because that uh, can give you false positive. You wait. Uh, if you patient in a coagulation, that also going to give you false positive. You wait till so you exclude all of that. Then you can check the patient for protein, 
see within S, uh, whatever code of hypergeometry state that you can think of, power 16, factor 5, uh, all of that you do after uh, that storm passes. The patient associated with cancer, uh, you for three, six months, not worth for it. Uh, the study shown that it is not official. Uh, the study that showed benefit was done with low molecular weight heparin. So uh, they give it for three, six months in cancer patients. Then after that, if you still need it, you can go with the warfarin. Why? Why should it stay for six, uh, three to six months? Or okay. uh, again, there was a studies that showed that uh, the benefit, the predictive effect for the patients was the use of the low molecular weight heparin, not with the warfarin. Benefit for and her calculation. As far as I know, warfarin is more, it's a stronger weapon. But when you're talking about when you're comparing heparin with warfarin, warfarin, they go up. And for relief, that's it. It's not about aqua or uh, warfarin. Uh, it's more about how much you have to show. They don't uh, comparison that comparison studies, controlled trials, okay? they found that when they get patients, uh, specifically, that the parent or uh, an exoparent, uh, the protective effect for complication for DVT or pulmonary bliss was patient receiving that low molecular weight heparin were more protected than the patient received warfarin. So that's why the recommendation by the hematology oncology societies okay, is to get heparin uh, or more of the patient is hospitalized, more protective of the patient, of the patient which is much easier to uh, uh, use at home, uh, that the parent or uh, an exoparent of an ox, then you still need further anti-oxidation, okay? You can give uh, uh, warfare for three, six, after three or six months. So, if that again, it can be different, if that again, 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 في فرق شاسع للدرجه ان هم يتحبسوا حاجه زي كده يعني احنا عندنا هنا اهو فيري اكسبنسيف انا ما اقدرش اطلب من المريض ان هو كل يوم ياخد بالمبلغ دوت مده ست شهور فعشان كده انا عايز اعرف البنفيت للدرجات دي فرقه جامد ان انا ممكن اطبقها يعني على الناس الريتش مثلا الويلد يعني انا فعلا احطه على ده على اساس ان فعلا ستاتستيكلي سيجنيفيكنت لوور ريت اوف كذا وكذا اوكي هي هي Right. If you have, if you want to do uh, protection from blood clotting okay, in a cancer patient, okay, which we know is a hyperpyogenic state, okay, and someone already have a blood clot, okay, would you give them something? It's not going to protect them. You know that, okay, because it's a proven control trial. Okay, just because it's cheaper, okay, or we give them something that you know is going to protect them. That's what it is, the question is about. It's expensive. I know that. That recommendation, they are on the next time. Like the guidelines, or the things that they're doing. This is the guidelines. They're going to put it in the Harrison, or the things that we're doing, or Cecil. هل مكتوب ان احنا ندي لو مولكولار ويت هيبرين هيبرين لمده ست شهور بعد كده نقلب على الفروم؟ يعني ده بقت خلاص استبلشت في التكست بوك؟ Everything I'm saying today, it's for the American College of Physicians. That's my source. Okay, I didn't say anything for myself. No, no, I'm not talking about study. I'm not talking about study here. I'm talking about the established textbook. You know, we're just going to make sure that we're 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 going to make sure my main source today is the American College of Physicians. Excellent question. Excellent question. What about our extremity? Our extremity, the society, we don't treat. Okay. 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 
Okay. Uh, first, it's very excellent question. Thank you. Okay, bring that. Abel Shemiti. First time. Okay. No associates or spectres. Don't cheat. Okay. In terms of being, it's a premium being. You treat as a you can from Moses. Okay. Lower extremity. You treat. Okay. If it's a sheath with cancer, okay, or hyperpyogative state, you treat, regardless. Upper extremity, lower extremity, you treat. Somebody have a hypercargable state and he developed a deep vein thrombosis already. Okay. What can I wait for? If you don't treat him now, when are you going to treat him? Protein C, protein S is different than cancer. Protein C and protein S. You give him warfarin. Protein C and protein S. 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 Protein C and no matter what happened, mainly for the nurse repair, uh, for the, I'm sorry, for the cancer patients. This is what we're really trying to talk about. Okay? Prevention. Okay? You don't wait till the uh, blood clot happens. Okay? I have patients in my service who develop blood clots. Okay? I have patients in my partner's service who develop blood clots. Unnecessarily, okay. and that happened everywhere. Okay. And this is look at that. The, uh, the Agency for Health Care Research and Equality. This is one of the most respectable and uh, most efficient uh, 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 federal organization for the United States. Everybody listen to it. Okay. Everybody have to listen. To it. Okay. <laughs> uh, and they think uh, it's the highest ranked intervention for patient safety. In the recent report. Okay. It's easy to do, it's achievable, okay. unexecutable. Okay. Most of the time. Okay. Appropriate prophylaxis can reduce uh, this rate by approximately two thirds. Okay. Imagine that after every three patients, when you serve it, a blood clot in the leg or a tumor in place, you can prevent two. But still, even with, with the highest care system, uh, trying to be most efficient, uh, there is suboptimal use with these measures. Okay. What measures? Okay. Uh, 
Let's talk about first mechanical prophylaxis. Okay. Early ambulation is number one. Okay. Patient have a hip surgery, knee surgery, okay. put them in the chair as soon as you can. As soon as you can, maybe they have the surgery today, by the evening, tomorrow morning, they are up in the chair. Okay. Even in bed, I order for the physical therapy, occupational therapy, okay, to manipulate them in bed. Okay. Gradient, that's the compression stocking, I don't know what you call it, you will call it TED, TED, pose, the compression stocking, uh, uh, after the knee, after the thigh, whatever, you, like, use something. Okay. The, the one most efficient, uh, most used, uh, for us, is a sequential compression device. Uh, Interleukin and cava filters for prophylaxis, not really used. Okay. I'm not really recommended. Uh, maybe for specific population of patients like cancer patients, uh, surgical patients. Uh, pharmacological, uh, uh most commonly used. Luminical weight heparin once a day. And of course, we all know for uh, renal patients, we cut the dose to two thirds. Uh, obese patients, you increase the dose maybe. Or heparin, the cheapest one. Uh, how many use? 5,000 uh, every 12 hours, every 8 hours. Uh, aspirin is, is controversial. Use it or not use it? Uh, uh, we're not going to go there. Uh, one side you recommend it, one side you recommend it again, say, especially for hip surgery. We have plenty to use. Okay. Uh, warfarin, uh, uh, example, 2 to 3, no straight use. Talk about expensive, this one is most expensive. Uh, use it for, for special situations, and we'll, we'll come to that. When you cannot uh, use the other, uh, least. The take home message, aggressive prophylaxis, aggressive prophylaxis, aggressive prophylaxis, early ambulation. Put the patient out of bed, start physical therapy with the patient as soon as you can. Okay. Close for long. Okay. Special population. Look at that. Obese, orthopedic surgery. Ah, neurosurgery, breathing disorder, or hypercarbonic state. Yeah. I have a patient have almost all of that. 300 pounds, transferred from another hospital to uh, uh, our hospital. In the other hospital, uh, the, the nurses were moving the patient from one place to another. He fell, got an uh, ankle fracture, Orthopedic surgery. He have severe spinal stenosis, not moving. He have severe diarrhea. They have for him what's called the fecal collection system. They have a, a, a system where you connect the mouth externally to the uh, anus to collect the stool. Same same idea with the the folic catheter, at external. So this patient was hardly moving. He came to ask for a neurosurgery for his back. So we're actually debating him. He has two to atrial fibrillation. Paroxysm. We did that calculation, the control. We did the workup for the cardiac uh, issues, cleared him for surgery. Uh, we did the surgery. Post op, the neurosurgeon, we have that sequential compression device uh, on one leg, and the other leg had the fracture. Neurosurgeon did not clear him for 24 hours to get the uh, full prophylaxis with that uh, APEP. After 48 hours, we cleared him for DVT prophylaxis. So he got uh, 11 ox 40 milligrams. He got pain in his leg. So he asked the nurse to remove the 
sequential compression points, SCD. Okay. By the evening, this leg is falling. Okay. We called the ultrasound, came, uh, did the DVD study, paused. Okay. This is executable because we did everything right. We integrated him properly, preoperatively. Uh, we have the sequential compression device that's the only thing we can do for a neurosurgical patient. We have the Luganox order for him for DVD reflexes. He got the DVD, even with that. So, uh, next point, just to touch base about it. Head, head brain injuries, thrombocytopenia. Patient in heparin can get thrombocytopenia. Uh, if your vision plate is training down, you order the essay with antibodies, come back positive negative, come back positive, you give you something like thunderparin. Very expensive. I have patients who have once head over the head, no exceptions. Once uh, it's not the same thing, head or head. Yes. Always, if they have always over the head. What do you mean? Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. If the patient had uh, uh, head head over and they had the same thing, of course, they need to escape. Yes. This means that every time he's going to change, this happened to be having the same Yes. Yes. No way you have to remember this is a Yeah. Uh, you can take a break for two minutes. Yeah. I need a break.